So, yesterday, Nintendo had their Nindies showcase. And today, fans, media, get to go hand-on at the Nindies at night, which obviously takes place tonight. <laughs> um, they get to play out these games, and you're going to see more and more news come out about them. And I was debating on how to best cover this because I wasn't, like here when the Nindies thing was live so my chance to do a live stream reaction to it I uh, kind of fell by the wayside I was taking care of my children so I decided that instead I'm going to talk about two games from the Nindies showcase that I'm like stoked to play and I'm talking like Mario Odyssey levels of stoked and I little background on me, I don't play a lot of indie games. I just don't. There, there are not a lot of indie games that interest me, at least that have been shown to me, that I'm aware of. There are obviously some indie games I have played. There's indie games I do enjoy, but I don't actively go out of my way to purchase indie games unless it's something that just really captures me. And this time around, we have two specific indie games that did that from this Nindy Showcase. Now, to be fair, there was a bunch of games shown, and a lot of them look good. There was actually an RPG one uh, that I am somewhat interested in. I'll need to see some more information on, but I'm not going to talk about that one today. So let's get into the two games I'm going to talk about. And those are Golf Story and Travis Strikes Again, No More Heroes, which obviously a lot of people have been talking about Travis Strikes Again, No More Heroes. It was the biggest announcement. So let's spend uh, some time talking about Golf Story. So I had never heard of Golf Story before this event. Apparently it was a game that's been known. Uh, it is completely Switch exclusive, and that's kind of a theme with these two games that I'm talking about. They're both Switch exclusive. I don't really care if they were Switch exclusive or not, but it's just interesting that the two games that interest me the most happen to be Switch exclusive. And Golf Story is this game, and I'll have the trailer going on in the background here, where I am playing, or you get to play as a character that is in an RPG based around golf and there's like villains and story and upgrades and side things going on in many ways it kind of reminds me and not kind of it reminds me almost identically of what Mario Golf was back on the Game Boy Color like if you guys remember Mario Golf used to be an RPG uh, with different courses and villains and all this stuff. And it was a very interesting concept to me that, unfortunately, Nintendo kind of left to the side. And it's a quirky idea, and I understand it's a quirky idea. Maybe, maybe sales showed that people just didn't care about Mario Golf as an RPG. But Golf Story interests me, not just because I actually enjoy golf, uh, you know, whether it's Frisbee Golf, which they have apparently Frisbee Golf in the game as well. You know, typically call it frothing and uh, regular golf. And then they also happen to have something to do with flying drones. I have no idea, but I'm very interested to figure that, that mode out. And it all just reminds me of everything I loved about Mario Golf. Building a story, an RPG around uh, what are arguably some of the most boring sports to watch. Now, I think golf is highly enjoyable to play, but I have a really hard time even watching things like even the majors, like the masters and everything. Every now and then you'll see something just absolutely crazy happen, but it happens so infrequently that for the for majority, if I have the masters on or the U.S. Open or something, it's in the background, right? I'm not really paying that much attention to it unless there's, like, a playoff about to happen or, you know, it's coming down to, a, to some intense final putts or, you know, you know whoever's on the 18th hole and they're one shot back and who, what's going to happen. Um, I like the drama of sports, and that includes the drama that exists in golf. Now, I am, am really encapsulated with this. Just I love everything about the original Mario Golf and from what we have seen and what we are looking at here with Golf Story it's a lot like that but a 2017 version of it uh, and a 2017 version that 
is goofy and silly and not, you know, going for this high quality triple A 3D rendering thing. It's sticking to that more top down 2D aesthetic, which again, a lot of you know, indie games stick to, but it's doing it in a way that feels very modern. This feels like a game that I would be playing on my Nintendo 3DS tomorrow. Uh, except we're getting it on Switch, which means higher frame rate, higher resolution, so it's going to look even more gorgeous. And I think it really works well with the Switch, especially in portable mode. Uh, I'm actually pumped about it. And it comes out next month, which is just, oh, it's so awesome that this game is coming out so soon. Because I'm going to be looking for a game to play after NBA 2K18 comes out. And I realize that we have Skyrim coming, but I, I'm really looking forward to a new game. Uh, to kind of squeeze in my, my, my spare moments when I'm out of game. I might not stream as much. Uh, and Golf Story it just really excites me. And I feel like it could be one of my sleeper games of the year. Because at the end of the year, I plan to do um, you know a top 10 Nintendo Switch games from 2017. And I have a sneaking suspicion that Golf Story has a chance to sneak in as an indie game into the top 10. So we'll have to wait and see on that, but I'm so excited. And then obviously we have Travis Strikes Again, No More Heroes. I am pumped for this game because I loved No More Heroes on the Wii. It was just, mm, it, it was a stellar game. I don't even remember the story of it. I just remember having a blast. I didn't actually beat the game, but now that this game has been announced, I, you know, I'm, <laughs> I'm going to have to find a friend of mine who has a Wii, dig up an old copy of No More Heroes and No More Heroes 2 and just go to town because I, I love it. But I also, as excited as I am for this, like I've been waiting for a new No More Heroes game in forever. And I like like the story about the guy, you know, trying to avenge the daughter. I, it, it's awesome. But it's also <laughs> really weird to have this No More Heroes game announced. And then I also have to take a step back from it and be like, wait a second. We have this new No More Heroes game, but then the description after the trailer came out of like having to you're stuck inside this game and you have to beat six different games and we saw in the trailer like playing hotline miami and i'm like wait a second so is this like this game that isn't really no more heroes it's just based in the world of no more heroes and you're really just playing six different other indie games like hotline miami and you have to beat them to advance and you're not really actually playing traditional No More Heroes. That's what I'm, I'm worried about. It's a weird way to bring No More Heroes back because it has been a while. Uh, now, it'd be different, I guess, if they they brought No More Heroes back like this, but there was an announcement of like a true No More Heroes 3 or whatever. Uh, but we don't have that announcement right now. So this is one of those things where it, I'm worried and maybe the game's going to prove my worries are totally baseless. And yes, you got there's six indie games are in there, but you you know you there is a traditional No More Heroes game built around it. But if that's not the case, you know my worry is that this is going to Federation Force the <laughs> the No More Heroes franchise, and I don't think any of us wants to see that happen. The thing is, I think Federation Force is a fantastic game. But because it was announced and came out at a time when the, the future of Metroid was so uncertain, uh, it, it really did not have a very good reception. Uh, we all know how bad the reception of that game was. And I worry that Travis Strikes Again, No More Heroes, is going to be one of those games that actually ends up being really, really damn good. But if it's this, like this side dish that's not really traditional No More Heroes, that it's going to be off-putting to fans of No More Heroes and they're going to end up not only not giving this game a chance, they might start to give up on any hope of an actual true blue No More Heroes game coming out. Uh, and that would that would just suck. I mean, it is made by independent studios, Suda51, Grasshopper, blah, blah, blah. But it, it's one of those things where it's not exactly a series that is a, a top-selling franchise. So, uh, you know, if Travis Strikes Again doesn't do decently well then there potentially could be no more future for No More Heroes. So it's just a scary thought, and I'm still talking about it because I am excited, because I'm hoping that even with the six indie game thing you got to play in it, which I'm fine, that doesn't bother me, that there's still a traditional No More Heroes game built around it. I'm hoping, I mean, there is this epic showdown between these two huge characters and Travis Touchdown, uh, and I already forgot the guy. The guy's name, the father of the girl that he killed, and it's... I'm hoping that, bare minimum, you get to 
do a traditional No More Heroes showdown with him at the end, that would at least be something. Uh, especially if that something uh, at the end of that battle basically confirms the next full-blown No More Heroes game is in development and hopefully releasing at some point in the next year or two. And it, what I actually found interesting overall about the Nindy Showcase is the mix of games. I'm not surprised that pretty much all they showed was Switch exclusive, Switch console exclusive, or coming to Switch first games. Uh, that's not really a surprise. This is a Nindy's showcase, so it's going to feature games that are uh, basically highlighting the Nintendo Switch as a front-running platform. Uh, this is why you probably didn't see games like Rocket League. Rocket League's a huge deal. We know all about it. But we know it's coming to Switch. We know it's a huge franchise. But again, it's not. The, there's nothing notable for a Nindy presentation. It's not coming first to Switch. It's not coming exclusively to Switch. It's not a timed exclusive. It's not a console exclusive. It's just a multi-platform game that's actually being late ported to Switch. Now, they could have used this opportunity to talk about it and tout the fact that it, maybe it's the first indie game uh, with console crossplay that cross-plays between Xbox, Nintendo, and PC. That would have been an interesting thing to bring up, but I don't know that Nintendo is interested uh, themselves in jumping into the whole uh, internet debate that's been going on pretty much since E3 about cross-play uh, and you know, Sony's lack of involvement. Uh, Nintendo hasn't really answered questions about it outside of saying, hey, look, developers asked us, and we just said yes. Like the, the, That's like the end of the conversation end for Nintendo. So... Uh, Nintendo's not, you know, going out and seeking other people because Nintendo just makes games for their system. So they don't have games that are multi-platform, uh, you know, unless you want to count the mobile side of things and how that might interact with future games. But again, that's a Nintendo game, so uh, it's a little different. Now, I, I'm just, I hope my fears on, on No More Heroes are proven to not be correct. I hope even, even though it doesn't feel like it's a full No More Heroes game, because it just doesn't. Uh, at least it doesn't sound like it is. I, I hope that there's enough No More Heroes in there that it at least whets my appetite to get ready for a bigger game. And Golf Story. Oh, I I, I can gush about Golf Story all day. It is just... Mm, 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 mm. T to me, I, I don't know how popular this kind of game is going to be, but uh, needless to say, you're going to see a ton of Golf Story here at Nintendo Prime once it comes out because... I love Golf Story, and I can see me just talking about Switch, talking about this, and talking about that, and showing up lots of Golf Story. Now, as a full disclaimer, I know last week I started a new series uh, where I talk about games releasing next week. Those are released on Friday, and then games that uh, that are uh, were announced this past week, and those are typically going to be Nindy games or indie independent games showed off, and. I have to say that those, even though I just started the series, this is really bad form, there's probably not going to be videos for those this week because of the Nintendo World Championships and the fact that it's my son's birthday, my my youngest son's birthday, two-year-old birthday. He actually turned two yesterday, but we have the party on Saturday. If Friday, I have to spend a ton of time um, organizing everything and, and getting the food and getting all it together. And Saturday, I have to actually throw the party. And I also have uh, one of my one of my friend friendly i guess uh drafts for fantasy football right before the start of the regular season so uh it's just a really jam-packed weekend plus nintendo world championships on sunday it's just going to be all my regular stuff is kind of thrown uh to the side this week uh i will have a video coming out saturday and friday and sunday i believe uh but it's just it's going to be more of what I do on the regular daily content rather than the typical scheduled content for those days. Uh, but then we'll be right back at it the following week. So look forward to that. Anyways, folks, that's just my quick take on two games I'm really excited about from the Nindy Showcase. As always, I am Nathaniel Rumpeljance from Nintendo Prime. If you like this video, you know what to do. And if you dislike the video, hit that dislike button. Subscribe for more. And as always, folks, I will catch you in the next one.